Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here with some more sports news because the sports world keeps moving along, moving along. So, um, the first thing I got is there are some coaching uh, changes in the NFL. And uh, before I get into the coaching changes, I want to mention a non coaching change and that is my bears the chicago bears are going to keep ryan pace um and matt Nagy. you can't handle the truth going into next year and you know what i'm all right with that decision because Nagy, over the past three years that he's been the head coach of the bears has a 28 and 20 record and in three seasons as a head coach of the Bears, he's gotten them into the playoffs twice. So, you know, I don't know. If you, if you ask somebody, if you, if you didn't put a name on Matt Nagy and you said, there is a coach who has been a head coach in the NFL for three years. One season he won 12 games. He's made it to the playoffs two of the three seasons that he's coached. And he has a winning record of 28 and 20. Should that guy be fired? Most people would say no. But it's crazy. Then you say it's Matt Nagy, and then they say, oh yeah, he should be fired. No. I think he does. I think they both deserve at least one more chance. And um, I mean, they do have to fix the offense. The defense, the Bears' defense, is pretty solid. If they can fix the offense, or you know, and I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to keep Trubisky. I don't know if they're, if the plan is to try to get um, Trubisky to sign for, you know, an affordable amount, whatever that would be. I don't know what that would be, but, um, you know, I have no idea. So, but they, they probably are going to have to have a decent draft for whatever picks that they have. And then uh, they're going to have to figure out the quarterback situation, get the offense hitting on more cylinders than it did this past year. But I think those guys both deserve another shot. Now let's go to some teams that have different coaches this year. And most notably, you have probably heard that the Jaguars have a new coach, and that would be the Urban Meyer who coached at the Ohio State and some other places, Florida, uh, Utah or somewhere like that out west. I don't know. I forget. But anyway, um, yeah, he's going to be the new coach of the Jaguars. People are asking me, what do you think of that? You think he's going to be good? You think he's going to get the team whipped into shape? First of all, nobody's going to whip that team into shape immediately. But um, you would like to say that if anybody could do it, Urban Meyer could do it because he's won everywhere he's gone. He's, you know, turned programs around in college and he's been a winner at, um, you know, at every stop that he's made. Can he succeed in the NFL, a league in which so many other college coaches have failed? News for Jack's Jags analyst Mark Brunel joins me here on The Morning Show. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Bruce. How are you? I'm okay. So for Meyer, the decision kicks off a fascinating experiment of whether one of the greatest coaches in modern college football history can translate to the NFL. No NFL experience. So how's that going to play with the Jags? Well, it's uh, first of all, it's a, I think it's a great hire. In the NCAA. But that is a lot different than the NFL. And there are many coaches who have proven that. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, in general, college coaches, even the best college coaches, you know, Lou Holtz, um, the dude from Florida that, you know, used to be the quarterback of the Buccaneers when they first started, Steve Spurrier, yeah. They were great college coaches, but then they hit the NFL and they look like idiots. Now... There's been a, a few, a couple, maybe a couple successful ones like Jim Harbaugh, but, you know, it doesn't happen a lot. So 
we're going to have to see. So you've got the fact that he's been very successful on the one hand, and then you've got the fact that college coaches don't usually do very well in the NFL. So we will see. But the one thing the Jag, well, the couple of things the Jaguars do have is they got a relatively young roster, they have a lot of cap space, and they got the number one pick in the draft. Now, the big question here is, should they use that pick on Trevor Lawrence? I would say no, they shouldn't. They should go get something else because um, the, the Gardner Minshew guy is not a bad quarterback. If you give him time to pass and you give him good receivers and you give him a running game that he can rely on, Gardner Minshew would be fine as the quarterback of the Jaguars. You go out and you get Trevor Lawrence, he's going to have to adjust to the NFL game. He's going to have to adjust to the speed of the game. He's going to have, and it's just, you know, it's a whole big thing. You're bringing in one guy to replace some. Now, I'm not saying that um, Trevor Lawrence is probably not a more talented quarterback than Gardner Minshew. He almost certainly is from the looks of it. But I, what I am saying is Minshew is good enough, is fine. Minshew could get the job done if you could just give him a little help. So, but I think they're probably going to use it on uh, Trevor Lawrence. And then who knows? Who knows what happens? Because I think you're setting yourself back a little bit in the rebuilding process by going and getting yourself something that you're upgrading from a six, six and a half to an eight or a nine, potentially at one position where you have a whole bunch of other things that you need. But we'll see, we'll see what they do. So uh, the next team that we're gonna talk about is the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, here they are. They have hired a new head coach and that is Arthur Smith who is the former offensive coordinator of the Tennessee Titans. So he will be the new coach in Atlanta. We'll see how that works out. Um, you know, a lot of Atlanta's problems this past year, and again, we go back to the kind of like with the Minshew thing. Their problems really weren't, you know, their, their former head coach. They had a lot of bad luck. They made some stupid mistakes in some early games. They could have been a lot better than they were record-wise. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But they, uh, they, they're they one of the teams. They've got a new coach. And now, of course, the team that everybody knew was going to be getting a new coach and needed one badly. And that is the New York Jets, the New York football Jets. Of course, there's really no other Jets in New York except the ones that fly out of LaGuardia. But, um, yeah, so the Jets, they have a new head coach, and that would be one Robert Sala. And he is the former defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. And he will reportedly ha um, have Mike LaFleur as his offensive coordinator. Mike LaFleur is the brother of Matt LaFleur, who is the head coach of the Green Bay Packers currently. So we'll see how he does. Um, you know, he, uh, I've heard some good things about him and we'll see what happens with it. You know, um, you never really know when you hire a coordinator, no matter how good they are at their job, you just never know. But he's, you know, he's gotta be better than, than, uh, um, Gase was. So, you know, there is that. And that is the football news that I have for you. But now I got some baseball news. The New York Yankees, that's why I've got the Yankees jersey on, in case you were wondering. The New York Yankees have uh, inked uh, DJ LeMahieu to a contract, a six year, $90 million deal. 
for him to be their second baseman, jack of all trades type guy that can hit. I mean, he just he can hit. That's really the big thing. So yeah, the Yankees went and they uh, they they finally signed him. Everybody was very critical of the fact the Yankees didn't seem to be very urgent about getting LeMahieu under contract, but they finally did do it. And um, so we'll see how that translates because basically the Yankees have the same offense and um, are maybe a little worse in the pitching department than they were last year. So we'll see how that affects them. And the only other thing I got for sports news is that hockey has started. You may have known that. You might have seen that. And my Islanders started off with a 4 nothing whitewashing of the Crosstown New York Rangers, which was nice to see. Um, but it's nice to see hockey is back. The only, like I say, the only issue I have with hockey this year is that they are geographically challenged. You got teams like Carolina and Florida and Tampa Bay in the central division. And then you've got the St. Louis Blues in the west. So I don't know really how much any of that makes any sense, but we'll see. Like my brother said, what did you want the NHL to do? Have 17 divisions? Okay, no, maybe not. So we'll see. We'll see how that how that all plays out. But at least they're back and they're playing. So that is the sports news that I got for you right now. Again, like I said, normally whenever there's a whole bunch of stories that start to pile up, I'm coming out with them. And that is what I've got for this particular day in January of 2021. And that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.